Ronnie Montrose is best known to most as a guitarist from his early rock groups named Montrose and Gamma. But he's played on so many different albums and songs over his career, it would be hard to keep a list of every time Ronnie laid down a track for one of his songs or someone else's. He was always challenging himself to do better. Making great music was his life. Ronald Douglas Montrose was born in San Francisco on November 29, 1947, and moved with his family at a young age to Golden, Colorado, which was his mother's hometown. Set in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, Golden's about 15 miles west of Denver. Ronnie took off at age 16 and returned to San Francisco. This is where his career as a studio musician and sideman took off once he met the producer David Rubinson. Ronnie started a band in 1969 called Sawbuck. They were signed to Fillmore Records, which was co-owned by David Rubinson and a promoter named Bill Graham. They would work on an album and tour some as an opening act for other bands. While working on the Sawbuck album, David Rubinson set up an audition for Ronnie along with the Sawbuck's bass player, Bill Church, with Van Morrison, who had recently moved to California. Both were hired. Morrison had moved from New York to California to record his new album titled Tupelo Honey. Although I don't think he got the credits, he helped write a bit of the music, including the guitar chord riff you hear introing the song Wild Nights. Ronnie would also play on the song Listen to the Lion, recorded during the Tupelo Honey sessions, but was released on Van's next album in 1972 titled St. Dominic's Preview. 1972 saw more change for Ronnie Montrose. He would spend a short stint playing guitar with Boz Skaggs, and then he would be hired by Edgar Winter and would work on his third album, They Only Come Out at Night, which included the hit singles Frankenstein and Freeride. Ronnie recorded the electric guitar, some acoustic 12-string, and mandolin on this album. Edgar had this to say about Ronnie. When I put together the Edgar Winter group in 1972, the whole idea was for it to be the quintessential all-American rock band. Guys who were not just good musicians, but all-stars in their own right, fully capable of fronting their own band. So it was a huge talent search. We listened to thousands of demo tapes. When we were looking for a guitar player, I wanted contrast and balance. Ronnie had played with Boz Skaggs and Van Morrison. And even before I met him, I said, well, he has to be good. And as soon as I saw him play, even the way he flung the guitar over his shoulder, I said, oh, this is the guy. Edgar said what he really liked about Ronnie was his total commitment. Ronnie had a virtuosity of the heart and a rebellious edge. He was very spontaneous. And spontaneous he was as he would leave the Edgar Winter group and start his own group in 1973. So after that album with Edgar, Ronnie would leave and Rick Derringer would take his place. Now there's a story about the song Free Ride as to who played on the solos, but it has been said the solos were done by Montrose and Derringer. Montrose on the album version and Derringer on the single. But I've also read it was just the other way around with Ronnie on the single and Rick on the album version. If anyone has some more information or knows who played what, Feel free to leave it in the comments section. Either way, both solos kicked. Now on to 1973 and the beginning of Montrose. Ronnie put together the hard rock band Montrose with vocalist Sammy Hagar, then known as Sam Hagar, Bill Church on bass, and Denny Carmasi on drums. And the first album simply called Montrose came to be. Ted Templeman produced that debut album for Warner Brothers. The original lineup lasted just long enough to make the debut album. Bassist Bill Church left after that album and was replaced by Alan Fitzgerald for the band's second album, titled Paper Money, in 1974. And this was to be the last album for vocalist and songwriter Sammy Hagar. The first album, which I always considered the best, had some very good songs on it. Some of them were very strong and are still listened to even today. Ronnie put a great effort into that album, as did all the band members. Songs like Rock the Nation, Bad Motor Scooter, Space Station Number no. 5, Rock Candy, 
and always one of my favorites of the old classic rockers, Good Rockin' Tonight, which the arrangement and Ronnie's guitar work and tone just killed. Speaking of Ronnie's guitar tone, I remember hearing him talk about the gear he used in the studio back in those days. And Ronnie said that he didn't use a Marshall stack to get that big guitar sound on the debut album. He said that he used a 40-watt Fender Bandmaster with three 10-inch speakers. He said he picked it up at a yard sale for like 100 bucks. Now, he didn't elaborate much to say if this was just the head or it was a combo amp. But from what I remember, the combos were like 25 watts or so. But maybe he bought the head and had a cabinet. I'm not sure. But he did say he was using the Jensen speakers. He said he just plugged in and turned the amp up all the way. The only foot pedal he used on that album was a Big Muff Fuzz Tone, which I always thought was one of the most awful sounding pedals ever made. Ronnie said he used it on only one song, and that was on Bad Motor Scooter. But all the rest of that album was just his guitar and amp turned all the way up. He said his guitars back then was Les Paul's made in the 60s. I may have a few details wrong, because I'm going off memory here. If anybody else can add to this story or shed more light to it, again, feel free to do so in the comments section. But either way, that tone on that album was some of the best for the times in which it was recorded. Ronnie would release two more Montrose albums in the rock vocal format. Warner Brothers Presents Montrose in 1975 and Jump On It in 1976 featuring vocalist Bob James replacing Sammy Hagar. Ronnie would then shift directions and release a solo album, the instrumental album Open Fire in 1978, with Edgar Winter producing it for him. In 1979, Ronnie formed Gamma. Gamma had more of a progressive rock edge as compared to the Montrose band, but the project didn't really seem to catch on with the fans although many musicians found it very innovative and called it some of Ronnie's best work. This was heading into the 80s when the music trends were changing and a lot of the 70s acts were starting to drop off and be replaced with new and different music. The radio play for Gamma just wasn't there as it was for Montrose, in my opinion, and that's a shame. In 1985, Ronnie joined up with the Seattle band called Rail. They had been the winners of the MTV's first Basement Tapes video competition. Build as Rail featuring Ronnie Montrose, or just Ronnie and Rail, they played a set of half Rail favorites and half Montrose songs and a Gamma remake. At the end of the tour, Ronnie left them on good terms. He would also keep himself busy doing studio work, playing some solo shows, and even reuniting with the original Montrose band he would work with some of the biggest names in music. Ronnie was a great all-around guitarist. I don't think it even hit me on how great and versatile he was until I discovered his album titled Bearings. It's an album of acoustic instrumental rock music that Ronnie recorded and produced. It was also the last solo album released before his death in 2012. After listening to it, it struck me just how he could adapt to any style he wanted. He could get the feel, sound, and especially tone to play just about any music he wanted to. Before he passed away, he was working on an album with Ricky Phillips, who's the basis for Styx, and Kiss drummer Eric Singer. He wanted to put together a power trio again and record some hard rock. The concept was to record 10 songs with 10 different singers. That album was to be called 10 by 10. Though he never got to finish the project, Ricky Phillips and Eric Singer, along with Ronnie's wife Lisa, and Rhino Records, they all brought it to life and completed it long after his death. It is the last of Ronnie's work and some of his best. You can check it out on his website, which is RonnieMontrose.com. Ronnie's personal life stayed personal throughout most of his career. It wasn't really till after his death from a self-inflicted gunshot that it was told he suffered from depression most of his life. He was married twice and had two children. His widow, Lisa, said that he had had a difficult childhood. His good friend, Sammy Hagar, said, I thought Ronnie was tortured. Sometimes it was so difficult. 
But that was the last thing I ever thought Ronnie Montrose would do. No one knew he was like that or that he was really that tormented. He was so private. Rick Derringer, who produced that album for the Edgar Winter Band, they only come out at night and ended up taking over guitar for Ronnie after he left the group, said Ronnie was great to work with and produce. Ronnie Montrose played with a lot of heart. If you enjoy this video, check out the one I have on Rick Derringer. You might enjoy it too. Thanks for all your support and subscribing to the channel.